Zoos in the last decade or so have actually really changed a lot from what they used to be. Zoos are not as commonly referred to as just a place to go see animals in, in cages. Uh, zoos have actually become actively involved in conservation, not only uh, within the zoo, but and worldwide. Zoos have provided funding for projects at a tune of $160 million a year for the last uh, over a decade, and actually about a billion dollars so far. So one of the things zoos have actually started to realize is that they're a very good vehicle for actively being involved in conservation. The Phoenix Zoo has actually developed an area called the Arthur L. and Elaine V. Johnson Species Conservation Center. In that area we have animals that we care for directly, but all the animals that we're holding are, are animals that we have plans to release them back into their natural habitat. We work with uh, local governments such as Arizona Game and Fish and U.S. Fish and Wildlife to identify species that can benefit from our kind of expertise, which is to, to breed animals specifically for release back into the wild. And right now we're working with several species of animals. A narrow-headed garter snake, black-footed ferret, a Cherokee leopard frog, um, Mount Graham red squirrel, uh, a California floater, a three-forked spring snail, and a page spring snail, a desert pupfish, and the Gila top minnow. We also have a plant species called the Wachuca water rumble. Narrow-headed garter snakes uh, were once a snake that was readily found in the 1980s, but due to introduced species such as crayfish and bullfrogs, as well as diverted waterways, they are now listed as threatened as of last July. Since that time, we've kept a number of them in this uh, management program and we've been studying their reproductive habits. And it turns out that they're an extremely tricky species to get to breed. We had to kind of change up the way that you normally reproduce snakes and put them more in a natural environment. So we built an outdoor enclosure. Through this natural environment, they're exposed to males or females rather than artificially putting them together. This is our outdoor narrow-headed garter snake enclosure. Um, it's basically a little slice of what their habitat's gonna look like in the wild. These are a high elevation snake species, so they prefer colder water. We have some native plants that they would encounter, as well as willow branches, which is what the, the snake uses to hunt native fish underwater. The first ever uh, birthing event of narrow-headed garter snakes was here in our outdoor enclosure in 2014. What we're doing here today is um, at the Phoenix Zoo, we've been raising um, an egg mass of the Chiricahua leopard frog tadpoles. And we've grown them there until they've metamorphed into um, juvenile frogs. And we've come here to this site um, to release them back into the wild. So when we pack them up to transport them from the zoo to the wild, we use these containers, um, we stick in some water with a wet paper towel on the bottom, and we put around 10 to 12 in a container, and then we just pack them up with ice to keep them nice and cool for the journey so they don't get too warm, and then head them out in the trucks and bring them to the site. This is their pond that we are releasing them into. The Chiricahua leopard frogs, they're in trouble because of invasive species like bullfrogs and crayfish that eat their young. And also there's various fungal diseases that they're having some trouble with. At the conservation center, the Phoenix Zoo collects egg masses and raises them safely so that a greater number of frogs can be released into the wild. As with many amphibians globally, in the last couple of decades, the Chiricahua leopard frog is in decline. We've lost about a third of the uh, amphibian species worldwide. So it's important, a uh, head starting program actually when we bring in an egg mass, instead of only 5% of that egg mass reaching adulthood, uh, we can get 80% of those um, tadpoles to adulthood. And then since we have them in hand, uh, we can work with game and fish and, and identify ideal places to release that 
group of frogs into where they have the best chance to survive. So that's what we did today. We put uh, 344 frogs into our uh, pond here on Horse Service. Mountain Graham Red Squirrel, they live in southern Arizona, and what has happened is that there have been two successive fires in a decade, so they're going extinct. Not only that, also they have to outcompete um, certain introduced non-native species. Right now it's just a pilot program at the Conservation Center and the Phoenix Zoo. Again, trying to breed them, be able to re reintroduce them back into the wild. We've been working with U.S. Fish and Wildlife to develop a breeding program, and this area that we're in now is uh, some specially designed enclosures so that we can uh, assess how to get these guys to breed. The challenge of working with Mount Grim Red Squirrels is that they only have one day a year where their female is receptive for breeding, and in that day there's only about four to six hours where uh, it might be a good idea to put them together. What we've developed here is a way to look at these guys across the fence to determine whether or not they're actually reproductively ready. These two enclosures represent two separate territories of Mount Graham Red Squirrel. And what we're able to do with this arrangement is we can join these two together and then uh, we can uh, let one animal on either side and they'll still be separated by this fence in the middle until we see the kind of behavior that suggests that they're ready to breed. And then we can just lift this and they're actually ready to go together and hopefully we get breeding when that happens. The black-footed ferret is in danger because its food supply was nearly wiped out. They were actually on the very first endangered species list back in the 1960s. So the researchers decided they should do a captive breeding program. They pulled in the last 18 ferrets from the wild and started a captive breeding program in Seville, Wyoming um, in 1987. We've been involved with it since 1992 and ourselves, four other zoos, and now the U.S. Fish and Wildlife have facilities that are breeding black-footed ferrets. So it's a very exciting program. We've been committed to it for a, a very long time and have here produced almost 500 ferrets, many of whom we know have been released right here in Arizona. And this is Holly Gold. She is a five-year-old female, and she's been with us now for two years, and she's produced kits both of those years. Two kits last year and two kits this year. So she's been a good provider. She's retiring this year and she will be going with her kits to the Colorado facility of U.S. Fish and Wildlife. As of this breeding year, we've bred over 8,000 in the whole breeding program, not just here. And we have 24 release sites, 24 places in North America where ferrets are back on the ground, living with the prairie dogs, doing exactly what ferrets are supposed to do. This is literally an animal that could, in the near future, come off the endangered species list after being thought to be extinct twice. We believe it's, it's very important to communicate to young people the, an understanding of what's happening with the ecology and, and understanding conservation. The Zoo Teen Conservation Team is a special section of the Zoo Teen program at the Phoenix Zoo. And it's just a, it's an outreach program where teens interested in conservation can learn more and be more active in the conservation center at the zoo. What I like most about being a zoo teen in the conservation team is that we really get connected with the people who work here and we get to learn hands-on what conservation specialists really do. I've had the opportunity to do fish surveys where we go throughout the zoo and survey the of certain kind of fish throughout the zoo in their ponds. And we've done projects outside the zoo where we've gone and surveyed other animals. The conservation team, they work with black-footed ferrets, they work with the Mount Graham red squirrel, with the narrow-headed garter snake. They work with Arizona species in particular. 
I've always cared about the natural environment and I want to make sure that it's still there several years down the line. But I hope that as part of the Zoo Team Conservation Team, I'll be able to make a greater impact. There's so many things that are going on with species conservation or conservation in general and it's actually difficult for people to, to understand what it is they can do to make a difference. And one of the things that is easy to do is just to get involved and learn more about the species locally. One of the things that we do at the Conservation Center is we work with local species and we actually provide information about the animals in Arizona that need conservation. But in doing that, we provide people with information so that they are empowered and to make decisions when there's someone that says we, we need to draw more water from a particular stream. And they could say, no, the Chiricahua leopard frog lives there. So the more people realize uh, what it takes for an animal to survive, we think the more that they'll be compelled to get involved in, in helping save that species.